A few years ago, I was asked to um, be one of the presenters at our 50th um, class reunion at Stanford. That, that gives you some idea how old I am. And, and I actually was uh, worked, one of those that worked in ERL, as a matter of fact, years ago. But uh, I, wanted, I, I thought I'd start by giving you a, a, few, a couple of thoughts that I gave at, the, at that uh, class reunion because uh, both Anna Marie and I are so concerned about the, the education of our uh, nation's youth. So uh, uh, first of all, I would like to say that although every successful nation has to have a, a strong uh, system of laws and banking, uh, the 21st century uh, poses a different problem for, the, for this country as well as many others, and that most of the uh, new technology is going to require uh, a much greater depth of the, of the country in, in science, math, and engineering than ever before in the 20th. And so my concern is how do we make sure that happens? And that, that, uh, that technology has to be augmented by uh, ability to innovate using that technology, which often requires multiple uh, uh, technologies to, to merge together. And, and also, I would like to state that uh, Angela Merkel has the, has the right idea when she stated that uh, her, her uh, German uh, uh, country, or nation, uh, one of their strengths is expressed by three words, we make things. And I think that has to be one of the, the future uh, objectives of, of our nation. The second point is that we're a nation of immigrants, uh, and, and we ne should never forget that. And, and it's a very important for us not only to educate our own youth, but to make sure that we draw in the very best students from all around the world, not just in our country. And in order to do that, it's critical that our, our country has the greatest uh, uh, research universities in the world. And I think most of us know that, uh, at least in several different uh, evaluations, that Stanford uh, ranks in, in terms of research universities as, as at least number two, uh, sometimes paired with Oxford, sometimes paired with Harvard. And, and I believe that's extremely uh, important to be able to draw the very best from uh, the world students. And, and secondly, uh, something that I don't have any control over, but we must retain those students once they graduate with their degrees from Stanford or some other uh, major US uh, university. Now, uh, a little bit about who Anna Marie and I are. We both came from, from humble beginnings. Uh, I got all three degrees, as uh, John Hennessy said, from Stanford. Uh, however, I, I have to say that my mom was a hardworking mother who had to get up at five in the morning, and, and uh, she could not afford anything more than a sofa in a dinette for me to sleep on. So when s people say Stanford is only for the rich, that wasn't me. Uh, secondly, uh, Anna Marie was uh, born and spent her first years in a refugee camp in, in West Germany. And, and then when she emigrated to the, to the US, uh, she spent the next few years in California and a Chinese uh, orphanage. Her parents, both uh, attorneys in, in Europe, now were, were, can only be paid as laborers at that, at that orphanage. I was fortunate to be able to co-found a, a, a company, a high-tech Silicon Valley company, uh, and, and, and uh, over the years, over the next 25 years, uh, bring it to a, a, uh, a value of, of one half billion, for, which was uh, difficult for a company that, that started with no venture capital and it was mostly employee owned. 
And so we owe a great deal for all the employees that we had in that company. Over the, over the years, in addition to, uh, uh, to that uh, uh, technology uh, uh, building of, of, of our first company, I was able to write uh, three widely used uh, textbooks, uh, one on satellite digital communications by satellite, another one by, uh, on uh, navigation. And, and uh, uh, most of those, since I was working more than full time as the leader of the company, uh, I had to write those books on what I would say was the 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. shift. And there wasn't much uh, time to do any book writing when you're running a small high-tech uh, company. Anna Marie, on, on, on her part, she was able to, with her uh, degrees in economics and her MBA degrees from other universities, she was able to manage uh, and build a substantial real estate uh, whole set of holdings. Uh, and, and she did a marvelous job in, in, in that endeavor. And, and then finally, I'd like to say that we both feel very privileged and, and, and honored to have been invited to contribute to this uh, marvelous building. Uh, this uh, this uh, uh, spectacular, energy efficient uh, build, uh, structure of, of steel, uh, glass, and concrete is uh, not only housing an outstanding group of uh, faculty and, and engineers and students, but is also, I believe, going to be a tremendous asset in attracting the, the next generation faculty and students to this campus. Uh, the the, uh, the uh, a building is not just a, a building uh, when it's on a, a great university campus. It is truly, uh, truly an, a, a method of attracting the very best and brightest to this university. And, and uh, I believe that in the next uh, several decades that we will find a number of, uh, of uh, students and faculty founding new high technology companies that will indeed bring to our country many outstanding, uh, excellent jobs for our, for our nation with employees in the millions. And then finally, I'd like to say that I believe that that there's a, a, a great opportunity that many of those students and faculty will, will do something uh, that, that uh, I was able to do with uh, GPS and, uh, over the years and, and, and uh, developing the, the uh, GPS civil signal and, and a, a new signal that, that uh, is just being put in orbit, the L5 signal. But these new, new uh, faculty and students in the, in the near future are going to be able to do similar things, namely uh, do develop technology that indeed will, will change the world and benefit millions and billions of people. I think that opportunity exists now as perhaps never before in our history. Finally, I'd like to, to uh, mention uh, several names uh, that uh, that I won't have the opportunity to mention uh, in, the, in the evening. And, that, and, and those names, uh, number one is, uh, is uh, uh, Professor Brad Parkinson. Brad uh, was the original uh, uh, colonel that, develop, that was in charge of, of developing GPS in the very first place. And, and he, uh, for whatever reason, uh, brought me into the picture to develop the signal structure and do other things to, uh, to help uh, design the GPS system. So I, I have to uh, owe a, a tremendous uh, grat debt of gratitude for, for uh, Brad Parkinson. A second name is uh, John Brownie, who is my uh, uh, co-founder uh, and, and starting tele Stanford Telecommunications. Uh, unfortunately, the third uh, co-founder, uh, 
Dr. Peter Fitzgerald uh, died recently. And the, and the third person I wanted to mention is uh, Dr. Frank Natale, who helped me with uh, many of the, uh, of the tough engineering problems over the years in, in developing GPS. So any of that, I, I again, I believe that Anna Marie and I uh, owe a tremendous uh, debt of gratitude for this university because uh, if it weren't for my education at Stanford, I wouldn't be standing here today. So thank you very much.